All right, so as a reminder here, the speed test results that I was able to pull down wired into my laptop through my Google Fiber connection. So on the left there, you see the download speed I was able to get uh, was about 65% of that theoretical 1,000 megabit per second maximum of the Google Fiber connection. And on the right, you see that uh, the upload speed I was able to achieve was about 89% of that theoretical 1,000 megabit per second maximum. So like any good IT guy, you, you want to kind of dig in and figure out why those speed test results may not be reaching that full maximum. So that's what we'll do next. All right, so in order to help track down what might be causing this potential slowdown, I prepared this diagram here, which allows us to trace the connection all the way through all the points of potential slowdown. So the first thing to take a look at here is the fiber optic cable connection running into your residence into the fiber jack. So working with the Google Fiber technician, I was able to verify that those quote-unquote light levels were more than sufficient to support the full gigabit connection. The next thing to take a look at is the, the Ethernet cable that runs out of the fiber jack into the network box. So that cable has to be at least a CAT5e or a CAT6 cable. The, the old category 5 cabling does not support up to a full gigabit per second, so got to make sure that that's um, sufficient. My setup, uh, it is a Cat5e Cat cable, so no concerns there. The next point of potential slowdown is the network box itself. Since this is issued from Google, it does support a full gigabit per second if you're running the wired connection, so no concerns there. The next point is the cable that runs from the network box into the machine. That has to be, again, at least a CAT5e or a CAT6 cable, uh, and it is, so there, weren't, uh, there are not any concerns there. The next point uh, of potential slowdown is the NIC card or the network interface card that's inside of the machine that's running the speed tests. In my case, uh, I do have a gigabit uh, NIC card. Again, if that was slower, it may not potentially f support the full speed. So that really just leaves the last point of potential slowdown of not achieving that full gigabit per second as my machine itself. So I'm running a Dell XPS 16, Core i5, 1 gigabyte ATI video, 4 gigabytes of RAM. But again, this machine is a few years old. So after consulting the Google help text, <coughs> it, it, you know, if, if all other things are uh, running and sufficient, it really does just leave the, the hardware or the machine itself as the point of slowdown. So uh, that could be uh, the motherboard or the chipset or the CPU, or it could even be other software that's running on the machine. But in my setup, it is my computer that's that's the cause of that potential slowdown. So I could um, you know upgrade or run the test with another computer, but that is really what's causing this, and it's my machine itself that is the bottleneck in this setup. So in order to understand this bottleneck problem a little bit further, let's take a look at a traditional internet connection. So in a traditional internet setup, you have the internet on the left, and on the right you have the computer hardware that's trying to consume all the content from that internet. Due to the existing internet speeds, that internet connection has actually acted as a, a bottleneck or a, a siphon point that will slow down how fast that computer can consume that content. What Google Fiber has essentially done is it has shifted that internet connection over to that same uh, larger area uh, where there's a lot of content being served up quickly, and it's moved that computer hardware now to that siphon or, or point of resistance where the computer hardware now can no longer consume the content as fast as Google Fiber can serve it. So let's take a look at other areas where this hardware bottleneck may be slowing down your potential to consume Google Fiber. Here again you see the wired laptop example that I was using in my test setup, uh, able to achieve about 65% of that full speed uh, in a download capacity. When I switch over and use my Wi-Fi over my 802.11.n setup, I'm able to achieve about 156 megabit per second down and 136 up. So again, now dropping significantly further down to only about 15% of that total speed. When I switch over and use my iPhone 5 and the Wi-Fi connection on that, it drops even further to only about 7% of that total capacity. So again, we're really seeing how the hardware can become a, a very large bottleneck to trying to consume Google Fiber's potential. Even when we bump it up and uh, use the brand new 802.11 AC standard, uh, the Kansas City Startup Village actually did a test uh, using that new setup. Even then, we're still only able to get about that same laptop wired connection speed. 
So we're really seeing an area here where the Google Fiber connection is, is serving up content in a way that um, the hardware that you're using cannot consume it. So, you know, w what are the options to have the full Google Fiber speed experience? And, you know, based on the tests and the samples that we've looked at, the, really the only way to do it at this point is to have a hardwired connection into a, a new computer. All right, so now that we understand a little bit more about what Google Fiber is, how it works, and the speeds that I'm able to pull down with my setup, let's get into a comparison of Google Fiber against the competition in my area and the connection I was using prior to purchasing Google Fiber. So what I was using prior to Google Fiber was Time Warner cable. Uh, I had the standard package, which was advertised at 15 megabits per second down and 1 megabit per second upload speed. I think that's a pretty standard setup for most people that would be purchasing broadband. And as you see down in the bottom right-hand corner, um, my download speed and my upload speed were indeed uh, right on par with what the advertised speeds were. Uh, here's a copy of my bill. So this is what I was paying for that connection, uh, which was $49.32 a month for that standard package. So um, that, that's what I was using prior to Google Fiber. So with that being said, let's jump right into some speed tests and do some comparisons between the Time Warner connection and the Google Fiber connection. All right, so we're going to run another test over the Time Warner cable connection here. I'm just going to download a test file, so I'm on the DivX video samples page. I'm going to go ahead and pick this uh, 1080p HD video here to just start the download. See as that's getting started, it's about a 300 megabyte file. Looks like it's estimating to take about three minutes right now, so it's 1229. We'll come back when this finishes. All right, so you see the file downloads finishing up here. It's got a few seconds left as it wraps up. All right, so the file's done. It's 12.31, so that did indeed take uh, pretty close to three minutes. All right, so now wired into the Google Fiber connection. I'm going to go ahead and do that same sample file download. So I'm on the DivX video samples page again. I'm going to click this same 1080p video sample that we know is uh, 300 megabytes. So once I start that up, you see it's downloading. Uh, status is down in the left-hand corner there. It's got a few seconds to finish up. As it wraps up, that I timed at an 8-second download. So very stark difference to the previous download over the Time Warner connection. All right, so I'm now going to go ahead and test out the upload speed. So again, I'm hardwired into my Time Warner cable connection here. I've got a sample file over here of about 54 megabytes. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop that over here and upload it to my Google Drive and see how long that takes. So you see the upload has started. Again, it's 12.53. It's going a little slow, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> pause this, and we'll come back when it finishes up. All right, so you see the file is just wrapping up here. The upload is just finishing. It's about 1 o'clock, so you see that that took uh, about 7 minutes to complete the upload over the Time Warner connection. All right, we're now hardwired into the Google Fiber connection. I'm going to go ahead and attempt that same file upload we attempted earlier. Before I do that, <clears throat> I just wanted to call to your attention uh, one terabyte down here. As we mentioned earlier, that is part of the uh, Google Fiber package. I, my Google account does now have one terabyte of storage. So we're going to go ahead and attempt that same upload of the same 54 megabyte file. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over uh, to my Google Drive. And you'll see there, in a matter of three and a half seconds, um, the file was uploaded. So very impressive. All right, so to wrap up this review, we're going to do a comparison review. We're going to take a look at, again at both of the services we've been comparing today and do some analytics on top of that. So again, the Time Warner cable connection was $49 a month with an advertised download speed of 15 megabits per second and an advertised upload speed of 1 megabit per second. 
The Google Fiber connection, on the other hand, is $70 a month, and it has, it has an advertised speed of 1 gigabit per second down and 1 gigabit per second up. First thing I'm going to do here is a wrap-up of the speed tests. Again, this is going to be using the raw speeds that I was able to achieve with my setup. The first test we'll look at here is the download speed comparison between Google Fiber, which is in the dark blue, and Time Warner in the light blue. You see Google Fiber is at about that 648 megabits per second that we had, with Time Warner being at about 16. Google Fiber comes in, in this comparison, at 40 times faster in the raw throughput. On the upload side, Google Fiber again uh, in the dark blue, Time Warner in the light blue, Google Fiber at 893 megabits per second with Time Warner at just one. That is an 892 times faster upload speed using the Google Fiber connection. That's pretty crazy. The next test we did was the file test. We downloaded that 300 megabyte file. You see there, in, in this instance, smaller is going to be better with Google Fiber taking 0.13 minutes and the Time Warner connection taking a full three minutes to download that file. That puts Google Fiber at about 23 times faster. When we look at the upload duration, Google Fiber again is about 0.06 minutes to do that 54 megabyte file upload with Time Warner coming in at about 7.5 minutes to do that same upload. That puts Google Fiber at about 128 times faster file upload. In order to put this into some real world context, um, when, when we look at that file upload, we are literally comparing a tortoise to the hare here with uh, the average speed of a tortoise compared to that of a rabbit being about 144 times faster. So when you start to look at it in a real world example, it, it really adds an additional level of, uh, of clarity to that, to that result. The final thing that I want to look at here today is just a price to performance comparison. So taking the, the price that we're paying for Google Fiber versus the price that was being paid for Time Warner and comparing that to the speed results that we're able to get. So when we look at Google Fiber and we take the, the average of the upload and the download speed being about 750 megabits per second and take that divided by the $70 per month <coughs> that is being paid for it, that gives us about 10.8 megabits per second per dollar with the Google Fiber offering. When we do the same thing for Time Warner and we take the 16 megabits per second down plus the one megabit per second up and average that to about seven megabits per second divided by the $49 that we're paying for the Time Warner connection, that gives us a comparison of 0.17 megabits per second per dollar. And that comes out to Google Viber really offering a value uh, proposition of about 62 times greater. I think that this, this result is, is very telling and it really brings to light just how competitive this Google Fiber offering is. Now, well, that's going to do it for this video submission. Thank you so much for watching. I personally had a lot of fun putting this video together. And I hope you enjoyed it as well and also learned something new about Google Fiber and some of the cool things that are going on here in Kansas City. If you do have additional feedback or questions, please leave those in the comments below. As I said, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to know when new videos and content are being posted to this channel, please subscribe. Otherwise, head over to ryancoleman.com where you can learn more about me, what I do, and additional content. So once again, thank you so much for watching, and please stay in touch.